Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you all a new modification to my 3D printers here. This is not the one that I did I featured in the previous video. Uh, this one is over here about to uh, print off a small part. So this one is a little earlier on in the modification stages. Doesn't have any of the newer stuff that I featured. Now this particular printer has an issue where the belts are a little bit loose. The belts are actually hopping teeth on the stepper motors and of course that's not really a good thing. Now as you can see on the back this is basically my belt tensioning system right now. All it is is just um, a couple zip ties. Now in the pr previous video I featured these printers the uh, this on this number two no sorry number four machine here I was having some issues or not really having issues but you know just struggling a bit not really having a fun time tensioning the belts. So what I've designed here let me bump up my ISO and move my light a bit. So as you can see I've already uh, swapped over the, uh, these are the idlers, or the rear idlers, and th this is what it looked like before. It was just a couple little uh, co or a couple little pulleys, and those just um, basically just they didn't really tension or anything. So they just all they really did was just make the core X Y design possible by just routing the belts behind this uh, these bearings and shafts here. I went from this to adding a tensioning pulley. So all I've really done here, it's a pretty simple little thing. This All this really does is tensions the belt or pushes the belt out about one centimeter this way. So out this way here. And um, I, all I've really done was just get a couple little pulleys here. And I have attached them to like a little slide area. And then there's a little tensioning screw. I just designed this up in Fusion 360. Pretty simple, pretty quick little model. Here is the other side. So what I'm going to be doing is I pretty much just have the identical model, but instead of going this way, I'm just going to flip it 180 and then have this do the bottom belt instead of the top belt. So I'll have both sides tension. So all it's really doing is just pushing this belt out about a centimeter. And of course that'll tighten it up here. Now another thing, when you do tension belts in a Core XY setup, one side will skew towards the front and one side will skew towards the back. So in the old system, I'd have to like notch the belts and get them super duper tight and then make sure that both of them were lying correctly and both had the correct tension in order for the actual gantry to be straight. That was the biggest pain point in uh, tensioning this belt here. Now let's go ahead and discuss the game plan for swapping these bad boys out. It's actually pretty easy. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and uh, loosen this bolt down here, or nut, sorry, well, bolt and nut. Once it's loosened the nuts off, I'll go ahead and take these two screws off here, push this out. I might have to flip around, it's easier to see it this way. Now I may have to flip around this rod holder here this side it's flipped around the right way just because the new design does poke into that now. As you can see, these little glandons stick out more than the old design which didn't really have a, a interference issue because I intentionally designed it to not have any interference issues. So. Then once we had that flipped around, we'll go ahead and install these pulleys onto this. And then once we have those pulleys installed, I'll go ahead and reattach it to the frame and then I'll tension the idler to the correct uh, distance here, probably full send, just because uh, that's what I did last for the for this one over here, unless if, you know, I might need to make some other adjustments. But that is the beauty of the system. You just turn, adjust this one screw, and it'll do the rest. I'm going to go ahead and set you all up and uh, get this thing installed. Okay, so start with this screw here. These ball and Allen wrenches are pretty essential for this tight print design that I have. And this neat little ratchet from Wera that has takes like a quarter inch hex drive is pretty dang awesome. All you have to do is just go in there and yeah, it's just like a regular ratchet, but super, super tiny. It's great for tight spaces and just for little tiny screws and things. I had these little miniature sockets for uh, metric and imperial. Pretty neat little thing. I'll, I'll put both of these in the description. This nice little Tecton ratchet set and this Wera guy. Like, this is, it's pricey, but these Wera tools are well worth it because they are always super high quality. So now I have this thing nice and loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two bad boys off here. 
Now, if you're wondering what this shroud is, this is a temporary shroud. This is just Reflectix aluminum insulation. I originally intended to laser cut plastic or polycarbonate side panels, some sort of plexi or lexin type deal. Unfortunately, when I got quotes from a laser, few laser cutting companies, they wanted near like a thousand dollars or some ridiculous amount to cut enough panels for like five printers, which I will. I need at least four of them, but still, that is just outrageous. So, that's why I got the laser cutter, and hopefully in the near future, I'll have the funds to be able to upgrade the laser cutter in order to properly cut that. Now, you all may, may be wondering what's going on with the laser cutter. Right now, it's in storage. It's in my attic right, as of, right now, and um, it's just waiting on more space as well as more upgrades. I need to get an actual CO2 laser because the one I have right now can hardly cut through like a quarter inch wood. So yeah, without like maybe some crazy adjustments and like a gajillion passes. So yep, just, I think it's gonna be about 500 to $1,000 to upgrade everything when all said and done. So yeah, just waiting for more budgets, openings, what have you, so I can actually justify, you know, spending that much money. Okay, so like I said, I need to flip this around. It's actually pretty easy. I need to loosen this little screw back here, and there's two of the same sort of uh, button head screws that hold it to the frame, which I just need to loosen so I can pull it out and then flip it. And of course, I do need some longer screws for this, because as you can see, this profile is a little thicker, so I'm gonna get some 10 millimeter M5 button head screws. Now, a bit of a spoiler for the next video for these 3D printers. I do plan on turning these into like a series and of course eventually releasing the design here once I have the time. I'm going to be going over how I designed the fan duct for the direct drive because as you can remember in the last video, I was not able to install the first iteration of the fan duct due to it conflicting with the position of the hot end itself. I got this guy designed here. It's actually pretty good. I need to swap it on because the one I have right now is pretty restrictive, and I'll go over all the design changes and things and how I've uh, led to this particular version. Okay, so got my hardware on the ready. Now I need to find the um, tiny, smallest Allen wrench. Or not, second smallest of this bonus set. I believe it's, uh, yeah, it's a two millimeter. Loosen it up just a little bit. Don't need to go full send on that. And then feel for this guy here. Ooh, she's on tight. There we go. Okay. Can I move it? Or does it need to be freed up just a little bit more? Hopefully I'm not in y'all's way too much. Eh, could be worse. Come on. Oh, just that bottom one that's giving me a bit of grief. Ah, oh, there we go. Of course the stupid thing fell off. This is probably lashed in there still. So loose. All right, so I need to make turn this nub and flip it to the other side. I really wish there's a better solution than these wing nuts that wasn't ungodly expensive. Cause I know there's like Open Builds has a few things like uh, just slide in nuts, but those are pretty pricey. You can't really build. Plus they're like double, so they're not always the most effective things there. Okay, I just need to tighten this. Uh, right here and then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our pulleys here so I just start with the uh, top one here and of course I do want to make sure that this one does not have the tensioner because the top one already has a tensioner on the other side so all I really do is just load up the pulley and just put it in the screw in position and this they have these little nubs on the side so I don't need washers or anything to space these they're already it's already included on the print nice little touch I actually spent like at least six months designing this printer, not including the iterative changes for the original design. And yeah, it was all like tightly designed so I wouldn't waste any space. Oh, actually, before I put that pulley in, I need to go ahead and load it up with the belt. So let's get the tweezers out, load this back just a little bit here, and then not get this flipped around. And then, of course, with the uh, pulley, you want to push it all the way back for now. And I'll push it up once we have the uh, belt ready to tension. So, I'll stick that there. Pretty much, we're just going to get it loaded. 
in the somewhat correct position so I can move it around and just like operates like any ratchet has like a little adjustment thing on there actually I'm just going to leave it finger tight for now make life a little easier on us and I'm just going to preload this a little bit so when it goes back and then put in our 10 millimeter or bolts button uh, at least it didn't fall too far away. Gotta get that little piece of plastic fluff off. Okay, it's one. Let me get the other one ready to rock. Okay. Then I want to. I've designed all these so this just goes flush up against this corner bracket here. Pretty neat little design. Like I said, everything is designed around every part, so it's a really, it's relatively easy printer to put together. There's not a lot, a lot of like guesswork and like where things need to go or measure it out or what have you. Like it could definitely be a kit someday if I. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and put this back because right now it's giving me a lot of tension. In fact, I'm probably gonna loosen up the other end real quick just so I can give myself a bit more slack here there we go oh, that's gonna be easy all right cool put that back there cool beans just hold it in place and then try to fight the stupid and no uh, just went straight or went out straight try boring these holes out a little bit on this side to make this process a little easier and whenever you're doing these stupid um, t-nuts or whatever the hell they're called You'll want to do the blind side first, so that's going to be the top. Because it's going to be a pain to really see what's going on with it. You don't want it just being held on by one, or else things are going to... Especially with this the load that these belts carry, it's not going to be the best idea. Oh my god, there we go. Get it barely in there. And then this one, you can just do a little visual inspection. Check on it. Oh yeah, looks good. Okay, <clears throat> so now go ahead and retension the front. And then I have a little stop nuts as well, keep me from going too far, or just to keep everything nice and tight when it's not all the way tensioned. What I'll do now is I'll load this up with a bit of tension to put that behind it. That's an interesting noise. I think I seem to have. Um, Put this thing through a bit of its through its limits. I seem to have cracked this base. Whoops. As you can see, we have a little bit of a crack right at the bottom there. Uh, no bueno. But it seems to be holding up all right. The middle section's a bit more stout than the outside sections. I may try to modify that in a little future iteration here. Back to the drawing board for now. But for now, I should have a relatively working printer. It is providing tension. Um, there's no binding on these axes. Actually, it feels a lot smoother when I, before I even had it tensioned, so, hey, there's a plus. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this back up. That could be another issue why it's, uh, bad too, is because this isn't tight, this wasn't tightened up properly, so. Bit of a snafu on my end, but I'm definitely gonna reinforce it because, that, to me, that's not acceptable. Uh, it does, it gets the job done for now, so I could probably run the printer like this, I could probably forget about it to be honest just because the middle post will compensate for the rest. It may at some point uh, give give out and obviously I want to be able to be ready for that and have a design ready to rock. So this is pretty much the process for a 3D printer is uh, redesign or design, test, design, test, design, test. And yep, this is just the first little iteration of this particular thing. Technically the second iteration of this idler, but with the uh, tensioner, the first iteration of that. And I'm pretty impressed by the performance of it. I think that could have been avoided if I tightened that screw, but I digress. I will um, definitely update you all with the next iteration. Of course, keep your eyes posted for a new video soon with me installing this and going over the uh, designs and airflow and uh, designing an actual fan duct for a 3D printer. And of course, if you'd like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Oh get in full frame here and consider subscribing just to check out more of these cool videos and to get uh, just to keep up to date and have a great day